All right, Shalom. Again, this is your brother, Brother Morris Williams, and we coming again with you, giving you more edification um, about different indictments against the message. Now, I'm running a little mini series, doing a little mini Bible studies, just giving people understanding because these are a lot of the objections that I had at first and objections that I ran into um, with uh, studying this message and understanding this message um, and, and realizing this is the last in time message. Uh, um, that the Most High is bringing. Um, after he said, after the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled, then will he turn back again to the seed of Jake, of David, uh, concerning the seed of Jacob, and be, begin to rebuild um, his kingdom. Okay, so now let's deal with these scriptures and um, let's see, because one of the main things uh, that we usually hear, I already dealt with um, more people talking about, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Uh, we dealt with that in the video and showed the understanding of that. Then the next uh, indictment that we'll get, a uh, 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 problem that I had initially and that most people have with it, that, okay, he came into his own, his own received him not, so there's no more reason to understand or even care about um, anything that's going on with the um, seed of Jacob or uh, understanding about people of the, what we call the Old Covenant. Um, but this is one of the main ones that I hear uh, that I had an issue with at first until I began to research and study it to get understand it. Um, because one thing about the scripture is its own dictionary. You ain't got to go out and try to find what different things mean. You can understand it because one thing about the scripture, it can ne it can never contradict itself. So if it seems like there's a contradiction, it may be on our part because we're trying to bring the American way of thinking and American culture and isolate a scripture, not being line upon line, precept upon precept, to try to bring understanding, rather than going into the Hebrew culture, understand what that what was going on at the time that um, the people within what Paul was dealing with, what Peter and the different apostles was dealing with, to understand what they meant by what they're saying, because it's easy to misrepresent or misunderstand uh, a person's intention uh, when they're writing the letters. It's just like Facebook or either texting each other. You can read a Facebook post or you can read a text and it can be misinterpreted, your intention. Uh, some people get upset. Some people get happy. Some people get certain type of ways because of misinterpretation of something they read on a Facebook message or a text. So we must understand what the author is thinking, uh, what's going on in his time to fully understand what he's saying. So now let's deal with this. I know that was a long introduction, but let's deal with this. It's identifying who Israel is today, striving in endless genealogies. I heard that that's that message of striving in endless genealogies. It ain't about that no more. So let's keep moving. Let's see. Let's get understanding. May the most high uh, uh, enlighten the eyes of our understanding that we may see and perceive what he's saying. Let's keep going. All right, let's go into the scripture. First Timothy chapter one, verse three through four. It says, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus. Now that's important to understand what was going on in Ephesus because that was a Greek culture. But it says, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Let's see what he's talking about. Ne neither giving heed to fables and endless genealogies. So he coupled fables and endless genealogies together for a reason, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is of faith, so do. Titus 1 and 14, not, he's saying it again, not giving heed he, to Jewish fables and commandments or traditions of men that turn you from the truth. Now, just by listening to that, with understanding the message of the restoration of the kingdom of Israel and identifying who the people of Israel is, would that turn you away from the truth? Would that turn you away from the Messiah? Would that turn you away from uh, having faith in the Most High? No. Titus 3 and 9, but avoid foolish question. Would you say the genealogy... That's all through the Bible. It's foolish. What you're saying, understanding the Messiah's genealogy is foolish. But avoid foolish questions, genealogies, and contentions, and striving about the law, for they are unprofitable 
and vain. So now we see what that says as face value. But now let's do the research and go into that time and see what they was dealing with to see what we have concluded about the message of endless genealogy. Let's see if it holds water. Now, one thing we must understand about Paul, um, all the apostles knew because he got a, a, a revelations um, and understandings, but a lot of people misunderstand Paul even in our day. And then when you look at what Peter is about to say about him, you are understanding. Even if you read uh, the books of Acts, verse 20, all the way, I think, through, uh, not verse 20, but chapter 20, all the way through chapter 23 or 4, uh, or just read on through. You can go all the way to chapter 28, and you will see about even in his time, he was misunderstood. And he had to clear a lot of things up. So just when you get a chance, just read Acts chapter 20 and go all the way through 24, 25. You need to keep going all the way through 28 and you'll be able to see some of the things that he was dealing with. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 15 through 17. Again, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 15 through 17. And I count that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given to him, wrote unto you, as also in all his epistles, letting you know the apostle was reading all his epistles. I read that again. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given to him, wrote unto you as also in all his epistles, speaking of them thing, uh, in those things, in, in these things, wherein are some things hard to be understood, which the ignorant and unfast rest as they do also with the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, knowing these things beforehand, knowing this beforehand, beware. Let's be carried away with the error of the wicked. Ye fall from your own steadfastness. So he's saying that Paul wrote things that'll be hard to be understood to the ignorant, the un the unsteadfast, the rest. Now, you would have to be honest and say most of us over here in the Western world is ignorant to Eastern culture, to the Hebraic culture, unless we have un understanding it, studied it, and dissected it because I'm still trying to understand and study and dissect it. If we haven't done that, we would be considered ignorant to that culture because a lot of times we try, especially in Christianity, we try to take the middle of the book and understand the whole book and everything that's going on in end time prophecy by reading from the Gospels all the way to Revelations and think we understand everything that's going on. Now, how silly is that? Can you watch a movie at the climax at, of the movie and tell everything that's going on in the movie? Tell who all the, the, the characters are, the plot, the theme, even knowing what the end is going to be by starting in the middle of the movie and going to the end. You will be lost, not understanding. So how can we un think we can understand the scriptures if we don't understand what's going on from Genesis to Revelation? So it's important. To understand the old and the new covenant. And understand how they intertwine with each other. So we would not be able to understand Paul if we don't go into his time and see what he was dealing with. Okay, let's keep moving. Now, let's say this because I know a lot of times we see all these. Uh, uh, we go into the uh, books and the, you know, uh, what we call the old covenant. We look at all these. Uh, he beget him and he beget him and this father beget that father. And we just skim through that stuff. We look at the uh, uh, the genealogy table of the sons of Noah and we just skim through that stuff for years. I did. But now I understand the importance and I'm so glad it has it in there. So we can understand uh, uh, what the scripture is saying. And uh, uh, we, it, it also connect us to end time prophecy. Second Timothy three and 16 through 17 says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine. So everything in the scriptures, even this, uh, the so-called even the genealogy records, is profitable, pro profitable for doctrine, for reproof and for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So that's showing you everything in the scripture is profitable. 
Everything in the scripture is profitable. All scripture is given of inspiration of God, even the genealogy records is profitable. So there must be another genealogy that Paul is talking about that he's saying stay away from. Because you look at Paul, he started going through his pedigree, going through his genealog uh, genealogy record and some of his scriptures. And you would say that's a straight up contradiction. But what is he talking about? Let's keep moving. First Chronicles 9 and 1. So all of Israel, all of Israel is something that's known uh, within the kingdom of Israel. All of Israel would reckon by their genealogies. And behold, they were written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah who were carried away to Babylon for their transgressions. So you, uh, you are able to see that Israel was known by their genealogies. They was known what tried to be put in, what positions they could be put in, who could be king, who could be priest. Um, it was very important to understand where, we, where you were placed in the kingdom by your genealogy record at that time. So let's keep going. Now we even go come on over here to the Gospels. And Matthew 1 and Luke 3 also contains the genealogies of, of the Messiah. And we know that it's not endless and that it's not useless and that it's very important. Because if you don't understand the, uh, uh, the, the genealogy of the Messiah, who can, how can you know that he is truly the Messiah or not? Because he must through, be through the seed or the lineage of, of, of the house of David. So that's important to understand. So when we're talking about the scripture genealogies, it had to be some specific, specifically different that Paul was talking about that we don't understand that was going on at his time. Let's keep moving. Romans 11, here we go. I say then, have God cast away the people his the people he chose, cast away his people? God forbid. Watch this. For I am an Israelite. Wait a minute, Paul. You just said it's useless to talk about genealogies, but you bringing up your genealogy. It said, I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham. Wait a minute. Why are you talking like that? I got it. Why are you talking like that? Of the tribe of Benjamin. Why are you bringing up? This genealogy, if it doesn't mean that. Why are you striving in it? Why are you bringing this up? God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. So now we must understand it got to be something different. And I know a lot of us thinking, uh, 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 and I didn't think to put that in there, but I think in Philippians 3, when he uh, go down the list about his pedigree, he, he a Hebrew of Hebrews, and that he's... Um, uh, 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 Benjamin and, 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 and a Pharisee of Pharisees. He went through all that and he said, I count all that as done for the knowledge of Christ. Now, with even with that scripture, and I'll do another video on that one day. With that scripture, we understand that he's not just saying that he's de he destroyed everything that uh, uh, he received as far as because of uh, being birthed into the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the covenant that God had prom the most high, uh, promised that he was going to return and give to them. He's not talking about that, but what he was dealing with, a lot of the traditional uh, 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 Jews, they was trying to base their salvation and their special right with God just based off their genealogy, not needing the Messiah. They say they don't need no Messiah for God to honor his covenant. So uh, 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 are just saying that their salvation is based off them being of the seed of Abraham and being tied into Moses. But Paul was saying, no, I count everything that I have gathered. If Christ ain't in it, then I count it dumb, nothing. And that's the same thing we say today. If the Messiah is not the center, because you will not return and get regathered and get what was promised to you unless you accept the sacrifice, which is our Messiah. It's pointless to know who you are. It's pointless to understand that you are the seed of Jacob that the Most High is returning to according to Scripture. It's pointless to know that if you're not going to accept the Messiah because you will be of the seed of the wicked that get cut off. Being an Israelite, being your nationality, you will get cut completely off if you don't return and accept the Messiah where all your promises are locked into him. Let's keep moving. I hope that makes sense. Now, this is what I would say irritates me, because we can use 
every other characteristics to understand who a people are in prophecy. But when we come to saying that the transatlantic slave trade and the seed of the uh, descendants of the transatlantic slave trade and use the characteristics that we see in prophecy in order to identify who Israel is, we say, oh, you can't do that. How you know? It's been so many mixtures. How you know? The slave masters that ran into uh, all the women. How you know? And all these type of things. Yes, they have. But let's look at how we do recognizing other nat nations. Not Gonna bring up all these different mixtures. We never bring up uh, how we know for sure. We look at different characteristics in the scripture and say, okay, that has to be uh, Ishmael. That has to be Esau. So the nations are recognizing Bible prophecies without going into their genealogy. We would not go into who their father was, who they and they next to father, they next to father, we next to father. We don't say that. We look at their characteristics and we're able to identify who Mystery Babylon is. So let me go back. We're able to identify who Mystery Babylon is. We say the Ishmaelites are the uh, are the Arabs. Or some people say that in uh, Bible prophets. Some people say Esau uh, are the some people say Esau are the Arabs. Some people say Esau are the Europeans. Uh, some people say Esau is, is, is Rome. We talk about Gog and Magog. Or some people say they Russia. We talk about America. We identify them in biblical prophecy through their characteristics that we see. But when it comes to identify who Israel is, everybody want to people want to shut an ear to that and say you can't do that. Then everybody want to get real technical. Now, when we thought the Jewish people was the people, we ain't look at no characteristics. We ain't look at no Bible uh, prophecies. All we bought up was 1948 and say that's fulfilling a nation being birthed in one day, which is don't make a bit of sense it's so many scriptures in box uh, and all of the torah that that identifies who israel is that says what their condition would be and we ain't looking to none of that and just accept that i mean accept that the jewish people being the people and sending money and blessing them because of the false interpretation that we got out of the scripture that if we bless israel we'll be blessed so this is the stuff that we have to deal with that we got to come into and understand so that we may really move on and understand this message. But the prophetic characteristics to identify nations according to end time fulfillment of prophecy. We look at what these what uh, nations are fulfilling today and then we go into the scripture and identify them. But when it, we say that technique can't work when it comes to Israel. I show you that the hip hypocrisy that is in the doctrine uh, of the um, westernized, uh, Americanized version of the gospel. But let's keep moving. Now, we understand that it says that Timothy was in Ephesus and Macedonia. And that culture was a polytheistic culture with they believed in many gods. And they would have endless conversation about the origins of the planet, the origins of gods, and their genealogy record. And also, they would mix their genealogy, human genealogy record, up with the god genealogy record. And create all kind of myths and create all type of fables from their discussion. And all these things, in the end, they minister question, but don't edify you. So, let's see. In the Greek culture, you have gods for everything. The sky, the sea, the nature, wisdom, wine, light, hunting, war, love, fire. All of these things in Greek culture. And, and you had gods for everything. You would say, some would say Zeus was the top god. And some would say, no, it's another genealogy record that was before Zeus. And then some people would, you know, they'll sit down and talk about, okay, Adam was the first man. No, Adam wasn't the first man. It was some men before Adam. It was a uh, family, a uh, 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 species before Adam. And it would be go on and on and on and on. And they think they would, by sitting there talking and, and conversating that long about trying to find the origin of all these things and trying to connect even themselves with the uh, genealogies of the gods. They thought that they would get insights and understandings to apply to their to their situations now. All right. So let's we understand this about the Greek culture. And that's where you get all the mythologies, the myths and stuff from 
uh, with all these uh, Greco-Roman myths about Hercules and 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 um, uh, uh, Python or whatever you know about a lot of the myth mythological uh, characteristics and and movies and different things about heroic things that they're done uh, out there. As many of that, but then let's keep moving. So we understand that's the 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 uh, the culture that some of the Israelites was in because when they got scattered, they got scattered to these places and Peter, Paul and the apostles was coming and giving them the good news of the gospel. But then from that, well, let's keep moving on. You'll see that in a minute. But as you can see here, see you got Zeus said most folks thought that Zeus was the top head God. Then you got more genealogy records going on up here about the Greek gods and their family tree. Let's keep moving. Let's understand what Hellenists mean. Hellenists is when you look that up, I, I challenge everybody to understand that because that's important to understand what was going on in the New Testament. Hellenists is Greek speaking Jews. You can look at Acts 2 and 5 when uh, Peter was uh, uh, preaching to the men uh, or, or, or the people that was in Jerusalem at the time. They was at the Feast of uh, Pentecost and he said that it says in Acts 2 and 5 that these are devout no, no, it says they are Jews, devout men out of every nation. So when you read that, you'll see that it was the Jews were scattered and coming from everywhere and having had different tongues. They had the tongue of their captivity. But we're going to deal with the Greeks. Uh, Hellenistic Judaism was a form of Judaism in the ancient world that combined Jewish religious. Well, I say Jewish, but Israelite religious tradition with the elements of Greek culture. So we understand the polytheistic things of the Greek culture and the different gods. And you had some some of the um, uh, uh, Jews that grew up with the Greek state of mind and they began to infuse the elements of the Greek culture and also the Hebraic culture together in order to form their own type of religion or understanding. It says the conquest of Alexander the Great. Let's go into the history of this. The conquest of Alexander the Great in the late fourth century BCE spread Greek culture and colonization, a process of cultural change called Hellenization. So what Alexander the Great did when he began to conquer, he began to spread the Greek culture into all of his empires and fuse it with some of the cultures that was already there. That way, the Greek culture will find itself into every part of the existence of mankind, of his empire, and will go on for years after him. He would colonize them and mix the Greek culture. That's why you got the Greco-Roman culture. And that's why uh, they would meet. Yeah, that's why you got elements of the Greek and Roman culture, even in the American thought. Because that's a continuation of the colonization, of Hellenization. It says uh, uh, called Hellenization over non-Greek lands, including the Levant. These gave rise to the Hellenistic age, which sought to create a common or universal culture in the Alexandria Empire based on the 5th and 4th century BCE. You can see also the age of Pericles. Along with a fusion of Near Eastern cultures, the period is characterized by a new wave of Greek colonization, which established Greek cities and kingdoms in Asia and Africa, the most famous being in Alexandria and Egypt. New cities were established composed of colonists who came from different parts of the Greek world, none from a specific met metropolis city. So this letting you see that even at that time, that the Greek culture, the Jewish or, or the uh, Israelite culture was being influenced with Greek thought. So let's keep moving. Let's look at Acts 14 and 10 and show this and let you understand about the endless genealogies and the fables and the different things that they would come up with that Paul was dealing with that had nothing to do with the Hebraic Israelite genealogy records and the importance of that. Acts 14 and 10 through 12, let's, let's see. And it said with a loud voice, stand up upright, this is Paul talking, on your feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw that Paul had what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices and sang with the speech in Las Laconia. It says, the gods are come down to us 
and the likeness of men. And they call Barnabas, which is Jupiter, which is Zeus, and Paul, Mercury's, which is Hermes. And because he is the chief speaker. So this is letting you see with the genealogy record. This is letting you see with the genealogy record that they instantly made them gods. And made them a part of the genealogy of the God, which is endless. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Let's keep going. Now, let's read this and go into some more histories of fables and endless genealogies. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogy, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do. First Timothy 1 and 4. The fables and endless genealogy, which of the Apostle Paul warns, could not have been the patriarchal family records, as many have taught. Timothy was a pastor of the Gentile church, which was Ephesus, which we already talked about, was a Greek culture. And his father was a Gentile. His father was a Greek, or his father could have been a, 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 Hellenist, a Hellenistic Jew, which is a, uh, a Jew with a Greek tongue and a, and a Greek thought because of his captivity. Timothy's childhood home was in Laconia, and especially his recent ministry in Ephesus have been in the center of intense pagan idolatry. He replete with all kinds of nature, myth, personifying various forces of nature as a pantheon of immoral gods and goddesses combined with evolutionary pantheism involving endless cycles of aeons in an eternal universe. Let's keep moving. Since all scripture is profitable, these fables must refer to the far more serious and permanent danger than that. The myth of which Paul warns is the first verse of this letter must be the same as the profane vain babbling of science falsely called which he condemns in his last verse in first timothy 6 and 20 in the life of both the evolutionary paganism of paul's day and the evolutionary humanism predicted for the last days you can see second timothy 3, 3 1 through 13 it becomes clear that paul reference to fables and endless genealogies is merely first century terminology for the 20th century mythology of multi-billion year particles to people of evolutionism we got a hint of that today. Going way, way, way back billions and billions of years and connecting gods and connecting uh, different species of, of, of humankind or mankind back to those things. That's endless. Let's keep going. Let's look at uh, Colossians 2 and 18. There's another warning of this. Let no man rob you of your prize by voluntary humility and watch this worshiping of angels dwelling in the things which you have not seen vainly puffed up because this is what was going on in their uh, cities and cultures. And these people was coming out of a mindset of that. They already had a Greek mindset. They already had a polytheistic mindset, believing in many gods. So a lot of times they would revert back to those things and start back worshiping those type of angels. Not holding fast to the head from all the body being supplied and knit together through the joints and the bands increasing in knowledge of God. So this is letting you see that they had this keep dealing and, 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 and monitoring them not to get caught up in what was going on in their surroundings. That's the same way uh, here in America. It, by us, understand, just say Paul was to travel here to America. He was still living. He was to travel here to America. And he would use the covenant and what was prophesied to us in order to get us to understand who we are. That's how I know he had to use the same method that we use in today. Use the scriptures. Use Deuteronomy 28 because Israel was known into going into captivity. But it'll be the same way that he would tell us, OK, y'all in that American culture, but y'all got to pull away from those holidays. Now, don't get keep getting caught up. And, and your Christmas and getting caught up in your Easter and getting caught up in all these type of things because those are worshipped to other gods. Now we do it in ignorance here. They don't tell us it's worship to false gods here. We would have to go out and really do the research to find out. But in those pagan uh, uh, cultures, they understood that and they knew it. And we know even in America, all our holidays are pagan. Stuff that they was worshiping even in the Greek culture. It's just a modified, commercialized version of it. So Paul and Peter and the rest of them would have to send us letters admonishing us. Don't get caught up in that stuff. Let's keep moving. 
More on fables and genealogies. We ain't got much more. Fables, fictions or stories that were not founded on fact. The pagan religion abounded with fictions of this kind, and the Jewish teachers were also remarkable for the number of such fables which they had introduced into their system. It is probable that the apostles referred here to the, the Jewish fables and the counsel which he gives to Timothy is to have nothing to do with them. It is abundantly clear that Paul is concerned for that assembly in Ephesus would not be would not be taught false doctrines. His list two of them with fables and endless genealogies. There is a such thing as a Jewish fable such as Paul mentions us in Titus 1 and 14, but those are doctrines of men like what can be found in the Talmud and oral traditions, not the law of the Most High. There are also many mytho mythological doctrines in Greek paganism. Concerning genealogies, there's another aspect of genealogies. Uh, I think it's Philo, an Alexandrian Jew who wrote a little before Paul's time, built a whole system on genealogy. And the names in the, in the genealogy which he represented was the various conditions of the soul. So we can see that these items that Paul listed had nothing to do with the doctrine of keeping the most high. I mean, the most high. Rather, the various, very opposite. There are no fables or endless genealogies in the most high word. The genealogies that do exist in scripture are for a good purpose. Again, I know I'm reading a lot. First Timothy 4 and 7. But refuse profane and old wise fables and that's that exercise and exercise thyself rather to ungodliness. Let's look at what he meant by profane. But re refuse profane and old wise fables. These seem to refer particularly to the Jews, whose Talmudic writings are stuffed with mo the most ridiculous and profane fables that ever disgraced the human intellect. It may be with propriety being applied to the legends of the Romish church. Let any man read of Aria. You can look that up. I think it's Legenda. And he will find profane and old wise fables what may stand with considerably propriety. Column for column with the Talmud. You can see Joe's lines life of St. Patrick of for miracles without rhyme or reason abundantly most numerous and most stupendous than all the necessary ones wrought by Jesus Christ and his apostles. So it's saying here and in these articles and these books you can look those things up and it'll show you the, the, the exaggerations that even is said about Christ and the apostles. This is enough to persuade a man that the spirit of God had these very, very corruptions and this corrupt church, particularly in their view. And you can see in Greek culture by old wives tale, they had classical myth stories for the ancient Greeks and Romans. The myth stories and legends surrounded the gods, the goddesses, creatures, monsters that featured in ancient mythology. They had even had mythology for children. Every god had his own classical mythology. Now think about that. All the gods in Greco-Roman culture and Greek culture and uh, have their own mythology. So what would you call that? Endless. And in order to bring all that together, you would have to go into all their genealogies and how they was birthed and how they was formed and have a story for that. That is endless genealogy. Now you try to miss that with Hebraic thought and come up with stories taking the Hercules story or taking the uh, 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 another old wives uh, 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 tale story in order to give a point so a children would want to do better. Paul is saying, no, you stick with the scriptures. You stick with the Torah. You stick with what was given by the Most High. That's, it's enough in that rather than going to all these fables and endless genealogy. That's just like how we would say a fable uh, in American it's uh, where you are uh, telling children where well, you better be good or uh, uh, son ain't going to uh, give you enough for Christmas. Or you're going to have the elves come and, and they're going to get you if you ain't good during Christmas time. You understand? That's the same thing that was going on at that time. What we doing now. Let's keep moving. So we're able to see through what I was showing you that this had nothing to do with scripture. Because Paul began to talk about in Romans 11 and even in Romans 9 and even in Romans chapter 3. It let you see how important it is uh, to understand about the restoration or the kingdom of Israel as a whole. And what, been, what has been put on their lineage. 
We can read Romans 9. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continued sorrow in my heart. For I wish that myself would be a curse from Christ for my brother's sake, my kinsmen, which is my genealogy record according to the flesh. Watch what's on us. Who are the Israelites? He calling out us, the Israelites, to who pertain of the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises, which are the fathers of whom also concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. So this letting you see the importance of the kingdom of the people of Israel, the true Israelites. It's important to identify them because it's either a blessing on them and it's a curse on them. And it's a curse on the uh, uh, of their condition as a whole. And the only way they can come out of those things and learn to live over them until we come into the Messiah's kingdom is to give them the Messiah. Because the only way they're going to get the other side of these curses and come all the way into the blessings if they come into the knowledge, the understanding, and take on Christ and walk in his teachings and walk into him. Let's keep moving. Israel, God's chosen forever. A lot of people try to say, okay, all that's done over with. We even lost the genealogy record. But if when you say that and say through all our uh, captivities that our genealogy record was lost, but we have people, uh, scribes and, and, and people that not only wrote down the, the Torah and the genealogy, uh, genealogy records, but they was able to recite them. If you remember the movie Roots, when um, um, uh, the star of the movie, I forgot his name, he went to the actual tribe and he talked to the, um, at the end, he talked to the, I think it was the author, I can't remember what they call his name, but he sat there and that man gave them the genealogy record from the time of the birth of their nation all the way into where he was at. So we was able to do that, not only just writing, but speak it orally. Let's go. Jeremiah 31, 35 to 37. Thus said the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and all the ordinance of the moon and the stars of the light by night, which divided the sea when the waves that of roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, said the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me. Thus said the Lord, if the heaven and above can be measured and the foundation of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all of Israel, the seed of Israel, from all that they have done, said the Lord. Isaiah 66 and 22 for us, the new heavens and the new earth, which I make shall remain before me, said the Lord. So shall your seed and your name, letting you know, knowing that you are Israelite and identifying who the Israelite is, is reporting because the Most High said the only way that that nation can cease from being before my eyes is that I got to break the ordinance that I got with the moon. I got to break the ordinance I got with the sun, with the sea. If that can't be breaking, if the if the sky and the heaven can't be measured out or the sea and the earth can't be measured out, then it says, then the seed of Israel will stay before me. Your seed and your name. Jeremiah 33, 17 through 26. I'm almost done. For thus said the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of his house of Israel. Neither shall the priests of the Levites want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah saying, Thus said the Lord, if ye break my covenant of the day and my covenant of night, and that there should not be no more day or night, then only then also will my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he shall not have a son to reign upon his throne with the Levites and the priests my priest, the minister, as the host of the heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measure. So will I multiply who? The seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. The seed of David is the seed of Jacob. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Consider thou not what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord have chosen, he hath even cast them off. Thus said, I have despised my people. That they should no more be a nation before them, before me. Thus said the Lord, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if and if I and if I have not appointed the ordinance of the heaven and the earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant. 
so that I will not take any of the, his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy upon them. He's talking about the two families, which is the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. He said we, he would call their captivity to return. It's letting you see that identifying who Israel is and important. In the last slide, this is it. We're going to wrap it up here. Deuteronomy 31 through 5. And it shall come to pass when all these things have come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, we must understand what that is, which I have set before thee. Thou shalt call them to mind among the nations that you are scattered. We scattered here in America. Whether the Lord that God have driven thee and shall return unto the Lord that God and shall obey his voice according to all that I have commanded thee this day. Thou and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion on thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Lord thy God has scattered thee. And if any of them be driven out unto the outmost parts of the heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee and from thence will the Lord fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess and thou shalt possess it and he shall do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. It's letting you see that that rebuttal of endless genealogies and striving in genealogies makes no, uh, holds no water. We just broke that down. I hope you can understand this. I hope you can see what I had said. Um, again, it's Brother uh, Morris Williams. I'm signing out. Um, you, again, we're casting down every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of the Most High and the knowledge of Christ. So we still dealing with end time prophecy. We love you and shalom.